But another past-based argument is that most of us have shared in the burdens of creating the economic growth that we've had over, over recent decades. But most of us have not shared the benefits that have accrued over the last, over the last few years. U.S. GDP doubled between about 1980 and the present, about 40 years, a doubling of, a doubling of economic output in the United States. Yet, a minimum wage worker in the United States makes less in real terms now than they did in 1955. That's 67 years ago. And at that time, going back even that, that far, our economy had less than one third the productive capacity that it does now. And the story in Europe is really not very much different. Most of the gains that have come from the last 40, 50, 60 years of automation and economic growth have gone to the top one or two percent of people. And the rest of us are about where our, where our, uh, uh, our families were on average 40, 50 years ago. Some of us, the people at the lowest end, are very often lower as we've gutted social programs and so forth. Yet, we're all, not only have we worked to help produce, the, uh, produce this economic growth, we and our, our, our parents and grandparents have all worked to help produce these things, but also we, we have, are bearing the enormous environmental cost that we've had that accompany all of this economic growth. Imagine if our incomes and our available options had kept pace with economic growth. Say compared to somebody in, in, in the late 1940s when, when uh, economic output was about one fourth of it is now. So we could all be working one fourth of what we were in the 1940s and consuming the same. Or we could be, we could be working the same and consuming four times as much. And if our options had increased, we would be able to choose that. We would be able to work a 10 hour work week and get enough to live at a modest level. Full-time workers in the United States in the late 1940s had houses, they had food, they had transportation that would get them to work, to get all of the, and, and to see their friends and so forth. You can't, not many people can do that on a, on a 10 hour a week salary. Where did all those options go? Well, um, uh, I, I know a guy who, uh, who launched his car into space, uh, that's one option we can do with I, I don't know him personally, but you know, I, I'm just telling you what I heard. Um, and a lot of people will just say, well, that's the market. The market does these things. That's, that's just how, you know, and sometimes things change in the market. It is not just the market. It is changes in the rules. We've changed the rules to be very unfavorable to the leverage of low-income people to command a decent share of what we produce and the economic growth that we've all helped create. The leverage of workers is really low. That needs to be redressed. So I've given three automation-based arguments for UBI. None of them is about what might happen in the future. All of them are about what's happening now in the present, or what has happened in the past. Because I believe it's essential to recognize that UBI is not something we might need someday. UBI is long overdue, perhaps hundreds of years overdue, since we, since, since we enclosed the commons and we had a colonial movement that, that took access to natural resources from almost everyone around the world and made them wage laborers to the people who own the, the resources, the capital and the capital that we make out of resources. It is long overdue. We need it now. We need UBI.
to protect the 99% of people from the disruptions caused by automation, whether or not that automation is going to eventually lead to a big decline in jobs or not. 